Hello, good people, and welcome to Finest Skills Hub. Here, we learn, we connect, and we grow. So we continue our learning journey with a new series, Data Analytics 101. Now, the idea is to step back and understand some of the key concepts when we analyze data in Excel or Power BI. So we learn how to extract, transform, shape data, create data models, calculate with DAX, create dashboards in Excel, and also reports in Power BI. Now, this is going to be very practical. In every concept, we'll give you a case study, which we'll do together. Hopefully, you can practice after. So in this first topic, we are going to learn how to structure data properly so that we can use it in Excel or Power BI for our data analytics. So if you are game, join me and let's go through this together. So when we think of data, we normally think about it in the form of a table with column headers. Okay, so in this case study, we are using this payroll structure. I have name, high date, department, age, and salary. We call these column headers fields, okay? Now, when we enter data under each of these headers, they come in as records. So ideally, we want to enter related data for each field in a consistent way. So for what we know as columns, we call them fields, and then the entries that we make under each field, we call them records. Now let's concentrate on the fields. There are fields that have numerical entries, right? Now these ones help us calculate or arithmetically manipulate data. So we can sum, we can average, we can find the min and max of these fields. So in this example, I can calculate total salary, average age, profit, etc. Now, by themselves, these numerical fields are not insightful. So it usually requires another field which contains text, dates, or Boolean values, okay, to provide some context. We call these attributes, okay? So they help us describe our data or break down our calculations. So with these two, I can calculate something like total salary by department. Then I'm able to know which department is least paid, which one is most paid, calculate my top five and all that. So when we get data, we want to look at it through these two blocks, okay? What we call measure of value fields against attributes which help us describe our calculations. We take this all the way to dimension and fact tables later. Now, let's look at some key concepts or best practices you would have to consider whether you create the data on your own or you download it from somewhere. So the first thing is, as much as possible, let each field have a single data type. So using this payroll structure, ideally, if in the field you are recording names, be consistent. As we go down the table, let every data type in each field be consistent. Ideally, you should have names, you should have high dates, departments. If they are dates, you shouldn't have any other data type in here. Okay, makes it easier. So that's the first rule. So in the second rule, we are saying that avoid pivot style layouts. As much as possible, separate value fields from attributes. So if you have a layout like this, where you have branch 2018 sales and 2019 sales, in these two columns, you have a year attributes and a sales value field. So what we are saying is that separate these so that it makes it easier for you to get your numbers with the sales and then describe it by year and by branch. When you do this, you are pivoting. So try as much as possible to on pivot that is turn the columns into rows so that you can have the attributes sitting in separate fields okay against your values you have a lot of options when your data is out like this okay even at the very early stage you can use some ifs or pivot tables to get insights where you calculate sales and then describe by year and by branch right now, the third rule is that avoid inserting subtotals in the raw data. 
at a very early stage, you'll be doing this later when you analyze your data. So don't put in subtotals, okay? These ones distort the structure. That will be ideal for your pivot tables or any visual that you want to use later. So take them out and let the data flow freely, okay? And then the last rule is that please put a value in a cell, especially in Excel. So if you look at this, the branch has been labeled Accra, Ghana. Accra is a city, Ghana is a country. So if you want to really get insights from your data, separate city into the respective field and then put Ghana or Nigeria into a country field. Then you have your year and sales. It gives you more room to get insights from your data, right? So with this at the back of our heads, now let's look at a case study. So in this case study, we are going to learn how to combine data from multiple worksheets and then use Power Query to transform them into a proper structure. We do this in two examples, using Power Query in Excel, and then we use the Power Query in Power BI as well. So if you again join me and let's go through this shortly. So we we'll start off with this Excel workbook. This has been shared in the video description. You can practice along. So we have data for revenue in 2018 and 2019, and then we have cities, which are our branches here. And then in the other worksheets, you have cost, right? Same cities, same year, okay? I know normally people prefer to have data sitting in silos in different worksheets. It's ideal, but when you really want to analyze the data together, it becomes a challenge. So in this workbook, based on what we have just studied, we are going to transform this data. First, understanding what attributes we can get from here and the values we are going to calculate from. So if you look at the two data sets, okay, city is available here. We have year 2018 and 2019, and then we have our numbers, okay? So here, what it means is that our final data or layout is going to be something like this. We have our city in one field, we have our year in another, okay? And then we have our amount, okay, in a separate field. And we can determine what class each amount is in, whether it's a revenue or cost, right? So here, we can now define every value that is coming in here as a revenue amount or a cost amount. Well, in this way, the data is going to be longer, which is preferred. Okay, so if your data is longer and the data is consistent, please keep to that. Okay, now how do we transform and then put these two worksheets together in one consolidated view? Two examples. I'm going to use Power Query in Excel. So here, I'm going to query the data sets in the same workbook. Okay, so we are going to use Power Query, and Power Query is under Data in the Get and Transform. Right. It helps if you convert your data into a table. So I'm going to start off by inserting a table around these two data sets. So Control T. Okay. I confirm that my table has headers, so I'll check this. Okay, I'll click OK. Then I'm going to name this revenue, to make it easier to reference in the query. I'll do same for this one. Okay, my table has headers, and I'm going to call this cost. Right. So if you have tables, it makes it easier. Now I'll go to data, go to get data, and then from other sources. Okay, there are many sources and get here, I'll choose a blank query. This way I can use an M code, okay, a simple formula in Power Query to extract the tables that I have that I have in my workbook. Okay, so this is Power Query. So when Power Query pops up, you have the option to enter your formula or your M code here. So this is going to be Excel the current workbook. Okay, so the current workbook. So when I enter Excel the current workbook open close brackets and press enter to bring the content of that current workbook. So in their tables, you list them in that order, right? Now, if you just click on the side, you realize that the table here contains what we converted into a table. So this is our revenue table and this is our cost table. Okay. At this point, we can use this icon to expand so that we can have the two tables come together. So this process is called appending. It's very useful when the headers are the same, right? So you have a consistent header in both 
worksheet this process works okay so i would expand i have some options here i'll take off this checkbox so that my labels don't become long normally uses the worksheet names to label the different columns so i take this off and i click ok okay so this way i have my data in the form that i want i have city here I have 2018, I have 2019, and then I have name here. You realize that it's just a step away from getting the perfect layout because 2018 and 2019 should not be sitting here as column headers. It should be turned into rows, okay, so that we can have a year attribute for our calculations. Okay, so to do that, you have to unpivot. So unpivot means collapsing columns into rows. So I'll highlight these two columns, okay, I'll right click. And then in the menu, I'll have on pivot columns. Okay. So when I do it like this, I now have my years coming in as an attribute, okay? And then my values set out right here, okay? Now, one important thing is that before you exit Power Query, it's important you check the data type to be sure the data type is correct. So you can do this going into the top left corner. So ABC means it has not been assigned a data type yet. So I can conf convert this to a text. This is a text, this is a text. Okay, for the fact that we are going to use it to describe data, you can leave it as text. Okay, we are not going to sum or aggregate. And then for our values, you can leave it as a whole number. Right. So this is that. So when we download this data, this query is going to be added to the list of tables we have in the book. We'll have to come back later, okay, and then make sure we take out this query when the data is being sourced. So let me close and load, and then I'll show you this. So when we close and load, the data comes in by default as a table. There are options to get it as a connection or a pivot table in there. So this is my layout. Now, to get back to the query, okay, I can go to data, queries and connection. This pane comes up, okay. Now, when I double click on this pane, I go back to my query. Now, what I was saying is, when you refresh this data, okay, so I have my source here. Okay, let's say I refresh, I refresh this data. Instead of having two tables, the new query that I added also comes in here. So sometimes it is important you come back, okay, and then filter out this query. So you notice the name is called query one. Hopefully this is not going to change. So you come here and then remove this query one from there. So we'll say that filter out those names that are not equal to, so I'm inserting a new step here, not equal to query one. Okay, so I'm going to do this. So this way, anytime the data is sourced from here, we will make sure that query one doesn't come along and then continue with the rest of the tables and then new content. Okay, so I'll close and apply this and I have my data well captured. So that is how we go about it in Excel. Now let's quickly switch to Power BI and then see how we can query the same data from Excel into Power BI using the same Power Query but in another method. So this is my Power BI desktop. So this is available in Microsoft Store. You can download it. Now, in Power BI Desktop, we first have to get data. There are many sources here. So I'm going to direct it to my Excel workbook and go straight to pick up my workbook from here. Okay, so when I double click, okay, this is a bit different from what we did earlier because the data or the transformed data is not going to be in the Excel workbook, but rather in Power BI. So the approach will be a bit different. So this as the navigator it helps us preview the data set we are bringing in. So I have cost here and then I have revenue here. Now, because they have the same structure, okay, I'm not going to bring in the two, but I'm going to commit one of these data sets for now. So I'm going to transform the data instead of loading it directly. So I'll transform the data. Okay. So when I go to transform data, I am in Power Query and Power BI. So this is similar to what we saw in Excel earlier. Now, the data comes in, the steps are here. 
Okay, so first it went into my file and then it got this workbook. Now, if you pay close attention, you realize that the name of the worksheet is here. Okay, as revenue and cost. And then you have my data here, right? These last three columns are the properties of the data. Now, if you look at the source, so after getting it from the source, okay, we went through the navigation and then it applied some automatic change type format. We are going to reverse these two steps. So I'll take off the change type and then take off the navigation. Now, the reason I'm doing that is that because I have these two data sets here, revenue and cost, okay, I can use this step to combine the two data sets, okay, and append them as we did in Excel. So this is the name of the worksheet. This is the data. Okay, these ones are properties. Okay, we don't really need them. So I'm going to delete these three. I'll highlight the first column, shift right. Okay, I'll right click and then remove these other columns. So this way I can have my names and then just my data. Okay, so now that I've done this, you still find that same expand icon here. So I'll click this, okay, and then I would uncheck the use original column as prefix. We did that earlier in Excel, and then I'll click OK. Okay, now remember that the CT 2018 and 2019 are supposed to be headers, right? So they are sitting in here as records or rows. So in Power Query, we have the option to use the first row as a header. So I'm going here to promote that. So that's CT 2018 and 2019 come in here as a header. Now remember that we appended two data sets. So likely the CT header also appears somewhere in the middle. Okay, so here you realize that for the cost part, we have the CT 2018, 2019 headers here. So in Power Query, we cannot directly delete a row okay, from the middle. We normally filter that row out. If it's close to the top, you can remove, it's in the middle, the best way is to filter that row out. So we'll come to city, okay? And then we'll locate, we'll come to city and then we'll locate that entry city and then filter it out, right? So this way we now have our revenue, our city, our 2018 and 2019. Remember the last step that we did is to highlight these two, okay? And then convert them into rows, we'll right click and then we'll pivot these columns, right? So I now have my attributes, which I'm going to name here. Okay, and then I can also rename this as amount. Okay, you should have done that in the Excel as well. Now, the last thing you need to do is to make sure your data type is correct. So ABC, 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 and then amount. So the final step here before we close and apply is to name our query. Okay, so if you like, because it's now combined, you can probably call it sales. Okay, just to represent the two data sets that we have. So I can name this sales. Okay, then I can close and apply. So in Power BI, when we close and apply the data sets in there, so you can now go ahead and create a data model, create some data calculations or visualize. But at this point, hopefully you understand that when data comes in a shape, that is not fit for analysis. You can use any of these methods we've gone through to transform them and then do your calculations. So join us in subsequent series where we go into some other concepts to help you analyze data properly in Excel and Power BI. Thanks for joining us. If this video was helpful and you would like to receive more of these videos directly on your WhatsApp, you can send ad to this WhatsApp number. We'll add you to our broadcast list so you receive our videos directly. You can also visit our YouTube channel, Finance Skills Hub. All our old videos are here. Please subscribe for notification of new videos or connect with us on any of these social media handles. Thank you so much for watching.